Okay, as we, be, as we begin this uh, new section on initial yield surfaces, we need to define a, a kind of an important plane called the octahedral plane. So I want to define that for you in this lecture and also show you uh, why it's so important. And, and uh, it's going to come in extremely useful as we uh, particularly talk about the, the von Mises yield criterion. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and just consider some stress tensor in its principal directions, okay? So we'll just say consider um, a stress, uh, we'll just leave it in direct notation, sigma, uh, in its principal directions or principal coordinates. Okay, so remember, we've already talked previously about how to find the principal coordinates, um, Right, just solving the eigenvalue problem. Uh, and we could write that stress tensor as, uh, if it's in its principal coordinates now, then we just write it in terms of principal stresses, sigma 1, 0, 0, sigma 2, 0, and then sigma 3, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so there's a stress tensor in its principal coordinates. And of course, we can decompose this stress tensor uh, into hydrostatic and deviatoric components. So let's go ahead and decompose uh, sigma uh, into the hydrostatic and deviatoric components. So hydrostatic uh, and deviatoric uh, components. Okay, and that's easy to do. So then we would say sigma is going to be equal to the mean stress, which is, uh, we'll just say a sigma m, right, times the identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, right, uh, plus now the deviatoric component, which is just going to be the subtraction of that. So sigma 1 minus sigma m, and then sigma 2 minus sigma m, and then sigma 3 minus sigma m, right? And then these are just zeros uh, on the off diagonals, okay? So we know that this is hydrostatic, okay? Uh, such that also we could define the mean stress sigma m is equal to one third times the trace. So in this case, it'd be sigma one plus sigma two plus sigma 3. Okay, and then this is our deviatoric stress tensor. So deviatoric stress, uh, we'll just call that S. Okay, so that's just uh, some, some definitions putting us into the right coordinate system uh, and then kind of introducing this decomposition that we talked about previously. Okay, now what I want to do now is consider a, um, a, a special plane. So I want to consider a plane normal that uh, makes an equal angle with all the principal axes, okay? So let's just say, now let's consider, um, let's consider a plane um, with normal defined as follows. Okay, with the normal uh, and I want to uh, I want to define this here as remember it's in principal coordinates. Okay, so let's consider a plane with normal and principal coordinates, and we're going to call this new hat to define that this is kind of a special plane. We could just call it n, but we want to define it as something uh, special, and if it uh, makes an equal axis, an equal angle with all three axes, then uh, it's fairly simple to write. And this is just the 1, 1, 1 direction. Okay. So this is going to be a plane that makes uh, equal angles uh, with the three principal axes. Okay. So um, we're going to define this new hat term as the octahedral plane. Okay, so we define new hat as the octahedral plane. 
or maybe it's better to say we define the plane with unit normal new hat as the octahedral plane. But you get the idea, okay? So what does that look like? Well, that means if I were to draw it here in, in stress space, okay, something like this, and let's say that these are the three principal stress directions, sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. And uh, let's suppose that I uh, try to make a semi-correct uh, semi cube. Maybe that comes across like this, comes over, comes down, over, and down. It's not a perfect cube. But the, the direction that we're talking about would be the plane that's defined just like this, okay? So if you want to, okay, that's the octahedral plane. Okay? Okay, so now we want to talk about, well, why did I introduce this special plane? What's so special about it? And to see that, we need to consider uh, uh, attraction on this plane. Okay, so let's let's do that. So let's go ahead and consider the traction uh, on the octahedral plane. So th this quantity nu hat. Okay. Remember from the Cauchy stress formula, we could write that the traction is uh, T i is equal to sigma i j n j. Uh, which in this case will be sigma ij uh, nu hat j because we're gonna this is the, the special coordinate and in principal coordinates uh, that's just gonna be one over root three right times sigma one sigma two sigma three right nothing too special about that yet so now let's go ahead and look at the normal stress on this uh, um, plane. So remember that the normal stress uh, is just the traction dotted with whatever the unit normal is, right? So, so the normal stress is going to be given by the following, right? We would say that sigma n is equal to ti ni, which in this case is going to be ti nu i hat. Okay, so that's just 1 over root 3, uh, 1, 1, 1, dotted with this quantity we just computed. So the 1 over root 3 times 1 over root 3 gives me a 1 third. Uh, and then the dot product now of the 1, 1, 1 um, component gives me sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3. Okay, well that's sort of an interesting quantity, right? I hope, hope you see that. Uh, we just defined it above, right? What is this? This is this is the mean stress sigma m. Okay, that's that's an important um, uh, important point. So what are we saying? We're saying that the the normal stress on the octahedral plane always is the mean stress. Okay, so it doesn't have anything to do with with the uh, deviatoric or the or the shear stress. Okay. So let me write that down. So the normal stress on the octahedral plane Okay, the normal stress on the octahedral plane depends only on the hydrostatic stress. So on the hydrostatic stress Okay, in other words, it's independent of shear stress. Okay, that's kind of an important feature. So I wonder if the shear stress that, that we would compute is then independent of normal stress. If so, that would give us a plane that sort of naturally decomposes uh, deviatoric and and hydrostatic stress components into a normal and the, the shear component on that plane. In fact, we might want to make a, a failure theory out of that. And that's the direction that we're headed. 
So let's go ahead and, and look at the shear stress now. So here we go. We want to consider now the shear stress on that plane. So consider uh, the shear stress um, on the plane uh, with normal of nu, or the hydrostatic plane, or, or sorry, the or, uh, octahedral plane. So the plane with normal nu hat. Okay. Okay. So how do we define the shear stress? Remember, this is now just the Pythagorean theorem. So we would say that. Uh, let me let me write it the whole way around first. If we had a shear and normal component, then we would say that the magnitude of the traction, so the magnitude of the traction squared would be equal to the shear stress component squared plus the normal stress squared. Or so we could then go write that the shear stress squared is equal to the magnitude of the traction squared um, minus the normal squared. Okay? So let's think about what that looks like. What's the what's the magnitude of the traction? Well the traction sits here at one over root three, sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. If we just the magnitude squared is just a dot product of that with itself. So we have uh, for the first term just a one third now times the quantity sigma one squared plus sigma two squared plus sigma three squared. Okay, and then sigma n, right, which we just computed, <clears throat> uh, sigma, sigma m, uh, sorry, sigma n is equal to uh, the, the mean stress. So we can just say minus sigma m squared. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll call this first one equation one. Okay, we're going to come back to that in a minute. Now. I just I know this is a little bit out of the blue, but I want to consider what the second invariant of the deviatoric stress is. Okay, so we define the deviatoric stress above. Now let's go ahead and consider the second invariant. So consider the second invariant uh, of the deviatoric stress, right? Which we said was S, um, and the second invariant was, we, we, if you remember back to our tensor discussion, we called that J2. And J2 was defined as uh, equal to one half times the quantity Sij, Sij, where summation is implied. So that equals, uh, if we're in principal stress coordinates, we, we proved uh, in our in our chapter on tensors that the principal directions for the deviatoric stress and the principal directions for the stress tensor were the same. So we could just write this as one half times uh, S1 squared plus S2 squared plus S3 squared, which we already know what these are. This looks like one half. That first term is sigma one minus sigma M, that quantity squared, plus sigma 2 minus sigma m, that quantity squared, plus sigma 3 minus sigma m, that quantity squared. Okay? Now we're going to do just a little bit of algebra. So this whole thing, uh, let me go ahead and start distributing out uh, some stuff from here. There's a 1 half still out, of, out front, so let's leave that there. So I, I get a sigma 1 squared from this term, a sigma 2 squared from this term, and a sigma 3 squared from this term. So let's just write that. Sigma 1 squared plus sigma 2 squared plus sigma 3 squared, right? And then I have this term gives me a, a 2 times sigma 1 times sigma m. This gives me a 2 times sigma 2 plus sigma m. And this gives me a 2 times sigma 3 uh, sorry, 2 times uh, sigma 3 sigma m. So what I could write this as is minus 2 sigma m times sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3. Okay? And then I have a plus sigma m squared plus sigma m squared plus sigma m squared. So this is plus 3 sigma m squared. Okay? What's this quantity? Well, that's the trace, right, by itself. Uh, the trace uh, is 
is three times the mean the mean stress so this is actually three times sigma m so two times sigma n times three times sigma m gives me six sigma m squared so that's a negative plus three sigma m squared and I'm left with uh, this quantity that looks like one half times sigma one squared plus sigma two squared plus sigma three squared uh, now minus three sigma m squared okay okay so remember this is an invariant this is a quantity that does not change uh, as we rotate or or anything else right this is an invariant quantity uh, because it's by definition it's an invariant quantity right uh, now i want to just multiply it times a constant right so if i multiply an invariant times a constant it's still an invariant okay but let's let's so let's do that let's multiply uh, by two thirds okay so that gives me that two thirds times j2 is equal to so two thirds here cancels the one half out and i'm just left with one third for this first quantity so one third times sigma one squared plus sigma two squared plus sigma three squared so my my two is canceled out of this one half and then now this three cancels out the one third and i'm left with minus sigma m squared let's call that equation two okay so what do i want to do here um i want to compare equation one right up here and i want to compare that to equation two and you'll see that they're identical okay so what does that tell us that tells us that the the shear stress on the octahedral plane depends only on the deviatoric stress that means it's independent of the hydrostatic stress okay that's an important quantity furthermore both the normal by virtue of being related to the trace uh, on the hydrostatic plane and the shear now uh, being linked to the second invariant of the deviatoric stress both of those quantities are invariants so we found a plane that its uh, shear and normal are uh, invariant and completely separate uh, hydrostatic from deviatoric okay so let me write that down for you i'm going to say that we observe uh, that one and two are identical okay right therefore what does that mean uh, therefore the shear stress on the octahedral plane okay uh, is only uh, dependent on the deviatoric stress which means that it's independent of the hydrostatic stress okay Uh, or we're not only just independent of the hydrostatic stress, independent of any changes in the hydrostatic stress. Okay, so we can equate uh, equations one and two because they're identical. Equating one and two, what what does that give us? That gives us that tau squared is equal to two thirds j two uh, on the octahedral plane. Okay, so what that says is that the octahedral shear stress is an invariant of the dv torque stress tensor and is independent uh, of the hydrostatic stress. So we want to, we ultimately, as we've talked about in terms of the, when we talked about physical mechanisms of plasticity, we talked about wanting the, the, the uh, plasticity criterion to be dependent uh, on, on only the, the non-hydrostatic or only the deviatoric components. So this uh, using this quantity is going to enable us to do that uh, going forward.